My name is Christine Hirsch. I'm a pharmacist and MPharm Deputy Programme Lead for the MPharm Programme here at the University of Birmingham. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about developing reflection, which is our journey along the MPharm ePortfolio. If I give you first a little bit of a background to the course and then take you through where we are so far. So we're now halfway through a four-year programme and we're just coming to the end of year two. And then pause for a bit of reflection on where we are so far and then move forward to think about our development in year three and four. So the background. In 2013, we had our first intake of a new co cohort of 80 pharmacy students here at the University of Birmingham. It's a professionally accredited course which require the students and us to demonstrate to the General Pharmaceutical Council that by the end of the course, the students can meet the standards required. And there are really three standards. One is to reflect on their personal and professional approaches to practice. They need to be able to create and implement a personal development plan and also review and reflect on evidence to monitor their own performance and revise this to produce their personal development plan. And in addition to this, we also wanted to or hopefully show that the portfolio would be a method of demonstrating integration of the knowledge that they've learned through the programme into their professional practice. Okay, this slide shows you how we've developed our curriculum. Rather than produce a standalone module for the ePortfolio, we wanted it to be integrative within the course. So we have four main module themes, Science of Medicines, Chemistry for Pharmacists, HDT, which is Health, Disease and Therapeutics, which cover themed um, pathology and disease and therapeutics across the course. And then we also have the Professional Pharmacist module. Each of these modules year on year become more complex, but also towards the end of the program, so in year four, all four modules are integrated together in a large 40 credit module called Integrated Pharmacy Practice. And then the students have to think about their formulation, their chemistry, how this applies to the therapeutics and the advice that they're going to give the patient together with all the legal and ethical aspects of professional practice. This is also linked in with their placements and the ePortfolio becomes our method of making sure that the students have applied their understanding and knowledge to their placement and that they've reflected on these as they go through. And in addition, you'll see that they have their research projects um, at the and a professional experience placement as well at the end of the fourth year. So in terms of a platform, why did we choose PebblePad? Well, the ePortfolio choice was really easy, really. We had worked with PebblePad before, and when we arrived at the university, it was also available. And it was really not a choice. Electronic was always going to be there over the traditional paper copies. So looking towards our learning outcomes for the ePortfolio for year one, really, we wanted to keep it simple. I think pharmacists in general find reflection doesn't come easily to them and certainly Reese in her work has shown that students will complete um, reflective practice documents but actually they often don't engage terribly well with the process and find that sometimes it's cumbersome and difficult. So what we wanted them to do through their first year was really engage in the process, start writing and show improvement across the year. It integrated with their learning outcomes for their year one placements. So they needed to be aware of the professional codes of conduct. They needed to be aware of any ethical issues which might arise. And particularly, we were focusing on issues of patient confidentiality. And we also wanted them to look at team working. The programme includes a significant component of interprofessional working and team working is in integral to patient safety. And so for our students to be able to demonstrate this was important in their reflections. And coming back to the integration theme, we also wanted the students to show how they've been able to integrate areas of learning from each year of module into their professional placement experiences. So 
So I've highlighted here the portfolio outcomes for year one, which we've just talked about, but showing you how these develop over year four. Um, so they move from just writing about it and starting to develop their reflective skills to in the fourth year applying aspects of their learning and applying these to novel situations, being able to solve problems as well. And we're hoping that the portfolio will be the medium through which they can demonstrate they've achieved this. We chose to ask the students to submit nine reflective pieces throughout each year of the programme. This mirrors the requirement of the General Pharmaceutical Council in terms of the number of assessed pieces of continuing dis professional development which need to be submitted for revalidation each year. In terms of length, the students were asked to submit five reflections with a maximum of 800 words, three related to their placement experiences, one in primary care, one in community pharmacy, and one in hospital pharmacy, and the other two related to um, some work set by Prof on a topic of professional um, significance at the time, and the other one particularly on reflection on interprofessional and communication issues. The students were then also allowed to submit four optional shorter reflections um, triggered by things that had particularly sparked their learning during that first year. In addition, one of the assignments was related particularly to part of the coursework assessment for Health Disease and Therapeutics 1.1 and the students here produced a group web folio on a, an area of research that particularly attracted them and was relevant for their practice in the future as pharmacists. And then each of the students attached their own individual reflection to that web folio, thinking particularly about what they'd learned, but also about how the group had coped with the web folio task. So these are students coming in from, from school. What support did we give them for the first year in terms of preparing them for A, their portfolio, and B, for reflective writing? They were given one lecture to, introdu to introduce the idea of the e-portfolio and they were then given a workshop where they were had access to their own computer terminals and could log into the PebblePad platform and practice short extracts of reflective writing and we also looked at web folio building. They were given some reference instructions on their VLE, so um, a quick guide on how to do the various um, stages of reflection and submitting to the platform and then we also set up a drop-in session for them um, after the web folio assignment was set to give them some reassurance and guidance that they were going in the right direction. And then after each piece of reflection is submitted the students can expect to get some feedback through PebblePad within four weeks of their submission. So just to give you an example, you may be familiar with this already, but the long, longer 800 word reflections which were set were, they were, the students were either recommended to use the reflective guidance that they'd been given, so we used Gibbs as a reflective framework example, but actually this mirrors very closely the structured reflection template in PebblePad and they've all been encouraged to build their reflections using each of these sections to guide them in their thinking. So the reason we chose the longer structured reflection template for their long reflections and then shorter ones is that we're trying to move the students from what they tend to do naturally, which is give a very descriptive account of what happened and spend a very short period of time thinking about the critical analysis and what they've actually learned from the experience, um, moving them towards something that's a little bit shorter and more manageable within the time. I think a lot of the reason that students find it difficult to understand the process of reflection is that it takes them a long time to do it and what we'd like to aim for is that the as registered pharmacists that they can incorporate this into their daily practice and and find it useful but be able to do this in a smaller number of words so we we're allowing them a large number of words to start off with and trying to get them to condense this down as they go through the course at the end of the year students submit all their reflection assets as a collection to their personal tutors to get feedback on them and the tutor's role at this point is to give some feedback for the students but also give an indication of whether they feel the students have met 
the criteria for passing this required component. The actual final sign-off is done by the academic that oversees the process, but we're trying to engage the tutors at this point. In order to do this, okay, in terms of providing support for the tutors, um, we provided some drop-in sessions for them, took them through the process that the students would go through, both in terms of the number of assignments they would have to submit, but also trying to show them that actually by engaging with the students' reflections would help the tutor become more aware of the students' needs and perhaps help improve their role and their relationships with their students. We gave them criteria for assessment and written guidance as well. And although this is a very busy slide and we'll return to it later when we show what we've done for the second year students, we based um, the assessment criteria on some work adapted from Rees and Sheard in criteria for un assessing undergraduate medical students' communication skills portfolios. So we've adapted those to fit in with our learning outcomes. In terms of reflecting on year one then, as far as the feedback process um, at a distance goes, much of the feedback on the reflections was being given by the academic practitioners out at the bases. Um, they had very little support. I gave them quick guides. Um, we had discussions in meetings, but they found the system very intuitive and found it very easy to access the work that the students had submitted and give feedback very quickly. So all of the students have re received feedback within four weeks of each of their placements. Um, and considering that their first placements all occur in the first term and then they'll have the second two placements in the second term, they've been able to have feedback which supports their progress in reflective writing throughout the first year. Um, we're obviously learning as we go along, so in terms of how we set up the workspace, there are slight changes that we might make to next year in terms of making it easier for um, students and tutors to see all of the feedback all at once. Um, but it's certainly all of the tutors who have engaged the process, both academic tutors and pra practice tutors have given feedback that's been very positive. One of the things that we wanted to or were hoping to gain from this, that the students through their reflections would not only show that they were developing their reflective writing skills, but also that we could demonstrate how they were integrating their knowledge and I think the surprise um, one of the surprises have been that actually they'd done this very naturally without being specifically um, given this as a learning objective so just as an example of some of the things that they've integrated through their reflections um, they've been given quite a lot of support on campus with their communication sessions and they've reflected that they found this very useful in their placement experiences when they've been talking to patients, both in primary care and hospital and community. They've also been able to show that they can transfer the dispensing skills um, that they've been practicing in their labs on campus back into their community placement as part of their professional checking process of their prescriptions. Um, they've also applied their understanding of chemistry and formulation um, and this has come through when the academic practitioners have given their feedback on their reflections as well and they've also been able to think about how important the interprofessional team is within their placement experiences and been able to express that through their reflections. So how have we approached the second year in light of where we were at the end of the third year? At the very start of the term, students have a workshop where they take the feedback from their year one reflections and the collections that they've given in to their academic supervisor. And initially we just run a workshop on peer assessment, so not just on the reflections, but also on marking other people's presentations and they're taken through the peer assessment process and introduced to the at this point to the assessment criteria for their reflections. There's a follow-up workshop then which takes them through reflective writing skills and they bring one of the reflections that they have felt they could have improved on from the first year and first of all use the criteria to self-assess this and then share it with one of their colleagues for peer assessment. 
So this is the same assessment criteria that I showed before, but just highlights the areas and the progress that we're hoping the students will make throughout the programme. So they can see what they're aiming for in trying to produce a reflection that is excellent and versus those that are just adequate. So they can see that they need to develop their skills, certainly at the end of the first year, in trying to add evidence to their reflections to show that they have critically thought about them and that they can produce evidence to show what they've achieved. So I think in reflection and summary, we need to continually revisit how we can best support our students, both in year one and now we're nearly at the end of the second year of the programme as well. We need to continue to support our tutors, um, and this is a continual process, I think, bringing the tutors online and continually supporting them. They only, um, although the academic practitioners are involved in giving feedback to the students after their placements, the academic tutors really only give the feedback at the end of the year. So again, it's about engaging with them continually, and I will see them again just before the end of year assessment process to make sure that they're all on board. We need to keep the tutors on board to make sure that this is a scalable um, assessment and we need to think carefully about how we build the architecture of both the platform and the portfolio into the course as we move forward. And we're also thinking about how we can evaluate this. I think one of the difficulties is that we want to keep the reflections uh, sort of confidential so that the students don't lose trust and feel that they can't express what they're feeling through the reflections. So we're going to evaluate these in a very sensitive way um, and look at themes that are coming through this. So in summary, we're very pleased that the students have demonstrated um, and spontaneously demonstrated the integration of their knowledge through their reflections. We know that tutors are learning a little bit more about their students and the way that they're teaching also affects their learning by the way they're talking about how they are using their knowledge in their placements and in practice. We've gathered some evidence which will allow us to develop the support tools for our students in future years. And as I already said, in terms of evaluation, we need to be very careful that we can do this while maintaining the confidentiality and the students' trust within the portfolio. And so we're working towards, really, it's this work in progress, a stepwise progression over our four years to produce work that the students can reflect on um, to be meaningful continuing professional development and hoping that this gives them a base to carry on building their portfolios in the future.